are similar, they will also predict similar values. Which means, so if you have vectors that are maybe not all that reliable, because we have probably seen relatively few occurrences of these guys here in the text, then what, will, what it will do, it will try and push those closer to, closer to, to, to more informative um, vectors and more issues, I guess, for example, in the Seychelles are both uh, 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 island nations that are relatively uh, well tested in, in Coppola, okay? So there is something like a, like a cultural clustering effect here, even. Um, and then there were three really bad predictions. Um, so Vatican City is here, <laughs> and Greenland is here, and Canada is, is here, and, and we are, I mean, we're, with Vatican City and Greenland, you, may, you might believe that they, they occur infrequently and, and, and maybe not in a very informative context or something. To be honest, I have no really, no real idea why, why Canada is, is completely out of the, out of the, uh, you know, the, the wrong. Are there other Canadas? Like a city name? Canada? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but in South America. Yeah, that's... No, no, that's what actually. That's that's that. That's actually a good idea. In Spanish, maybe it's like Canada would be like Cain or something like that. I don't know. Right. That's that's possible. That that there were there was some con some Spanish speaking confounder which you know makes it place uh, mm -hmm. makes it turn up here in, in Venezuela. Okay. Or Verde something in Greenland would it do this? Or I have no idea. I'm not in this field at all. But could there be green land in like some translation that? Is your data, are your data English only? Tierra Verde. All right, so it's only in there. There's no translation possible. But, but of course, I mean, if, if uh, it affected contaminated. Well, I mean, these these are, these are so and so many billions of billions of words. So, so there's always a chance, you know. I mean, they will automatically language filter that that stuff creeps in. Although, I mean, language uh, um, language uh, uh, detection um, is 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 essentially, you know, it's. 98, 99%. Could, could there be something mathematical more like, um, uh, you well, know, uh, where the longitude or latitude is specified, you know, like AM, PM kind of thing, right? Where you're saying six and it's obvious from the context that it's PM, but, yeah. uh, and it's, it's all mixed up. Well, I mean, so the funny thing is that, um, you know, I mean, the East, for example, for Canada, the East West. Uh, which I never, I never know which one this, uh, which, you know, which one is which in, in English. Um, anyway, so, so the east-west coordinate is, is, is relatively good. Um, it's not so clear why the what happened to the to the north south. So Canada, then this means Canada seems to, I mean, actually both Canada and Vatican City and New England um, seem to share uh, share. You know, distributional behavior with more with more tropical countries. And um, I can't really figure out. Why is there just a uh, uh, continent as a deep independent variable? That it has to do with the with the continent. So it's still in America, um, although not at the right place. Huh? North America. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we weren't really able to figure out what, what went wrong with Canada here, but, but, but there we are, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, so what, at the end of the day, then determines prediction difficulty? Well, um, there, is, there is a technical issue for, for categorical attributes, you know, that we cannot predict unseen values, which is, of course, very, very unsatisfactory. So, in follow-up work, we did change the change the encoding, and in the interest of time, I'll just I'll just skip this at this point. Um, then, as always, in natural language processing, that we have data sparsity. I think Vatican City just just is seen so so rarely that you know the model doesn't really know how to how to deal with that. Um, and so here is an interesting question, and this brings me back to the difference between um, the GDP per capita and the absolute GDP. Okay, um, so. You know, the, the, because I believe if you try to learn these attributes from just this very coarse-grained uh, occurrence and text data, then the important question to ask is for, for an attribute, 
um, you know, density distributional context that you could actually provide enough clues for you to make that prediction. And I said, um, you know, actually the, the, the kind of um, common denominator here is that uh, countries that are similar with respect to attributes should have similar distributional profiles. Uh, so they should occur with the, with the same context words. And I mean, if you look at countries, you know, with the same GDP per capita, I think this is a pretty reasonable assumption. Yeah. So, you know, you have kind of countries like Luxembourg and, and, and Denmark or something at the top, and they will occur with words like, I don't know, modern and rich and, and I don't know, stuff like that. And then, um, and then you have, you know, the, the, the really poor countries in, in Africa, and they will then occur with, you know, words like famine and, and poor poverty and, and relief and, and, and words like this, okay? Um, now, with GDP nominal, it's completely different because, um, I mean, Luxembourg, for example, although it, has a very, it is a very rich country, there are so few people there that the absolute GDP is still relatively low, and so we would probably have Luxembourg then with a similar value to predict, like, I don't know, what's like Bulgaria maybe, or, or Turkey or something like this. And this, of course, is, 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 is a prediction that's much, much harder to make from the... You know, also the context is so far, GDP per capita is interesting. GDP phenomenon makes no sense to just declare. Yeah. I mean, so, but it's, I mean, I think it's, it's yes, yeah. yeah, but, but, but I think, but I think from, from a prediction point of view, the interesting thing is, of course, that, you know, you have, you have a deterministic relationship between GDP per capita, GDP nominal, and population, right? Yes. So if you can predict two of the three, you should also be able to predict, to predict the third. But, uh, but again, of course, this is a deterministic dependency that's not so yeah, easy but to build. If you look at the country, you say GDP per capita, this makes uh, information. But if you get in nominal, or, or it's uh, China, for example, and then yeah. you can have a huge uh, GDP nominal. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm always a little bit cautious to, to just say that's an attribute that I don't want to predict because, you know, um, as, uh, as somebody who does modeling, I'm always predicting the service to somebody else, and if somebody comes and says, I, I want to be phenomenal, then of course I have to, to have a story about um, whether I can or cannot cannot predict that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> do you do any sort of um, uh, basically waiting, or I mean, you, you're going to have the United States occurring much more, and now I'm thinking about the Canada thing, right? It's sort of countries in the Western Hemisphere that are not the U.S. Right? They're all to the south. And uh, my point is that the U.S., you have these problems also with English being, you know, 60% of the web, or yeah. it's less now, but, you know, something like this, where it, it just throws everything up because you have a skewed data set. And can you do resampling, for example, in your data where you, uh, so in order to even these out so that Maldives is mentioned as many times as U.S.? Mm. Well, we, we we didn't we didn't look at that specifically in, in, in this study, but kind of the general my general um, uh, my general um, expectation or, or um, experience from distributional semantics is well, um, if you try to subsample, for example, to, to make the number of occurrences um, uh, to even out the number of occurrences. Just lose. I mean, you take all the data that's that's there, and I mean here, in this. I mean, as long as, for example, your um, your uh, values are, are normalized, right? You normalize your vectors so that the absolute length of the vector does not does not really matter. You know, I mean, essentially, what you have is a vector that you're more sure about because you have you have seen more occurrences in one that you have less confidence in because you have seen it few times, um, but I mean specifically in the but but for the for the purposes of the prediction um, that that shouldn't really that should really matter that much. I have a problem in my own project or I had a problem which is that uh, you basically this in the, let's take currency well I should just predict euro right because there are dozens of euro countries mm -hmm. whereas the chance that I'm right I may be close and let's say I have two candidates for Armenia Drama and Drachma. 
Okay, but it's just too risky. I better just say euro than, than to choose drama or drama. What I mean is that the system learns that, and the system just parts, starts putting euro for everything. Yeah. And, and it, because it achieves a higher score that way. Right. Is the, is, are you making the same analogy to everything in the Western Hemisphere is south of the US? Yeah, I guess. Uh, I wasn't meaning to, but yeah. yeah. I mean. Uh, like I if mean, I just put it down there somewhere, I'm more likely to be right. Right. I mean, you have sort of you, you, know, you know what I kind of work on, right? Where I have only three categories, which is good, medium, and bad. Well, the system, unless you do something to stop it, it's just going to say medium, medium, medium. Yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Without really thinking, because it says this is actually safer. Sixty percent of the data are medium, so yeah. I get sixty percent correct. Yeah. yeah. If I do anything else, it goes down. But but those are two different questions, right? I mean, one is the question of your of the distribution of your output classes, right? Um, and yeah, how to deal yeah, with right. imbalance there, and yeah, and, and 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 if you talk about the number of occurrences of U.S. versus Maldives or something, we're talking about the input features. True. True. So, I mean, I I I, I guess. Um, I mean, if, if you so 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 if I, if I just come back to the output features, I mean, if, if you make the the numeric predictions, I don't think it would, you don't get those majority effects quite as quite as easily, yes. as, um, because what you're optimizing is not kind of zero one loss against the majority class, but it's more like really distant from the ground truth mm -hmm. absolute value. Um, with with the with the Binary attributes. I mean, this is totally possible, and as you saw from the baseline, you know, the majority class baseline results, you know, like false is almost always true, um, because if you have this these categorical attributes and you binarize them, then all values but one typically, or very, uh, we also have have one to many relations, but, but almost all values will be will be false for a given. Okay. Um, you also said you are using neural networks. Doesn't that take care of what the input problem there? You are using. Mm, not, not per se. 